Hey everyone, this week we're talking about AI and computational imaging and whether it means the end for photography as we know it. So something a little bit different this week, and probably a little odd because it's not actually photography that I'm going to talk about, but it is image creation and it is definitely going to disrupt, in my opinion, the photography industry, if not already. So we're going to talk this week about AI and computational photography. And recently I ran some image polls on my YouTube channel asking you to determine whether one image was real or fake. And I'll be showing the results of those at the end of the video, so stick around for that. But what do we mean by computational photography and AI imaging? So if you have a smartphone with a camera, which I'm guessing you most likely do, then you're probably already benefiting from computational photography. It's been around for quite a few years now. When we choose a DSLR or a mirrorless camera with an interchangeable lens system, we'll often choose a lens with a really wide maximum aperture so that we can create a shallow depth of field and get our subject in focus but throw the background out of focus and make it nice and blurry. But due to the size of phones and the hardware inside them and the lenses, they can't do that. So it has to create the effect in other ways. So it will use computation and algorithms and AI inside the phone to work out which area is the background, which is the subject, and then it will automatically blur out the background for you. And there are other ways that computation is used within these devices, such as long exposure shots. Instead of creating them in the same way that a DSLR or mirrorless camera would, by leaving the shutter open for a longer period of time to record what's happening while the shutter's open, it will instead take a series of shorter shots and then it will blend those together to create the effect of a long exposure. And it'll do all kinds of other things like work out exposure bracketing. I've got a video on that, how you would do that with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. I'll link up top to that. But a phone will do that automatically. It'll take a series of shots at different exposures and blend them all together for you automatically. It'll work out colour correction. It can even do sky replacements and all kinds of funky things. We're also starting to see some of this technology creep into mirrorless and DSLR cameras as well. And particularly in the software side of things, we can see a lot of features such as sky replacement, content-aware fill, which will analyse an area that you've selected in your image and basically fill that area in with content which has been selected from other areas of the image, if that makes sense. So if you've got a person in your image that you don't want to be there, you can highlight that person tell it to do a content-aware fill and it will analyse the rest of the image and automatically work out how to fill in that area. And sometimes it works better than others, but the technology is improving all the time. It's definitely getting better and a lot of the time it works so well that you can't tell that that person was ever there. And you've also got neural filters in Photoshop now, which will do all kinds of things like harmonise different layers in your image so that they blend in with the background and it'll work out facial recognition and upscale images and all kinds of things that we couldn't do maybe 10 or 15 years ago. And AI imaging is something that's really started to take off in the last six months to a year, I would say. And this is something which takes the computational element of image creation to a whole new level. And rather than integrating it with the camera and a human as the image creator, it will actually create an image almost all by itself. All you have to do is give it a written input, or some of them have a speech recognition system where you can speak to it, and it will analyse your sentence and the description within it, and then create a piece of art based entirely on those words. So this really opens up a lot of questions for photographers. Like I said, this is going to be very disruptive for the industry, I believe. For example, I've used a couple of AI image generators now. I've used Midjourney and DALI 2, and there are a few others out there as well. I'll put some links down below. And they work really well. It's, it's really creepy in a way how well they work. I think 
They work by analysing other images that exist online. And obviously it's analysing your sentence and what you want and it'll look for other images. But you can even ask for styles, so you could ask for a landscape image, for example, in the style of Salvador Dali. And it will be able to create that quite accurately for you. <laughs> so what does this mean for photographers? Well, I think this is going to really create waves in the stock image industry. So whereas now people will pay money to get stock images to put in their publications and blogs, etc. I think we're going to start seeing AI generation as a replacement for that because it's all a little bit of a grey area with the copyright, who owns it, because it's not you really who's creating the image. I'm not sure that the software creators can claim the copyright because each image is going to be different and I'm not sure the code itself is going to be enough to claim copyright on it. I'm not an expert on copyright, but this is what I've read. So in a way, there is no copyright. So anyone can use those images. And where does that leave photographers? Are we going to be redundant? There are also websites out there now and software that will create human faces. There's a website called something like uh, This Person Does Not Exist. Again, I'll put a link below. And it will randomly generate a face and that person does not exist. It's literally just generated, but it looks so photorealistic you would not know. It's really weird. But this is the route we're going down. Will you need a model in the future? At some point, it will be able to generate an entire human body. You won't need to pay for a life model when doing photography. You'll just be able to generate one. So there are a lot of questions to be asked and a lot of things to consider for photographers. I'm going to show you some images that I've created using DALI 2 now. So as you can see, they're quite photorealistic. Again, I think it goes out there looking online to compare other images similar to what your description is describing. And if it finds other photos, it will generate an image to look like those photos. Mid Journey, on the other hand, looks a little bit more artistic. It's a little bit more of a painted feel. So I'll show you some of those images. And one of the other cool things that you can do is take one of your pre-existing images and put that into the AI generator and it will create variations of your image that don't actually exist in the real world. So I put this image into DALI 2 and it created these variations. So there's some really interesting stuff that you can do for photographers as well. Rather than be really negative about this, I was thinking how could a photographer use this in a positive way? So one of the ways that I think it might help is inspiration. So as photographers, we often go out, see a landscape, capture the shot, and that's our final image. But a large part of the image creation process is in our heads as well. So we can often be thinking about the type of shot that we want to get before we even go out. Maybe we want to capture a foggy woodland scene, 
or a big open vista at sunrise with all that golden light coming down. We imagine that and then we try to go out and recreate it with what we have in front of us. So perhaps using an AI image generator, we can create some inspiration from the words that we type in, what we want to see, and it will visualize that for us and help us to then go out and recreate what's in the image. So I think as an inspiration tool, that's one way it can be used. But then also it could be used to visualize an actual place that we want to go to. So if you type in say Mamtor into Dali 2, Mamtor is a really great location in the Peak District that I love to go and photograph, particularly at sunrise. Putting that into Dali 2, it will go out throughout the internet, find other images of Mamtor, and then it will reproduce its own versions of them. So you can get a little snapshot of what the place looks like before you go, which you can do anyway to an extent through Google. But the really cool thing is that then you can go in and change that. So for example, Dirtledore, very famous spot on the south coast of the UK. If we want to visualize that with say a thunderstorm, we can do that. Or if we want to have a lightning storm in the background in the sky, we can do that as well. So it's a really fantastic way of visualizing something that's hard to imagine or capture in practice. But once you've seen that, then you can go out and attempt to catch it for real with your camera. So is this gonna be the end for photography? Well, I don't think so. And for one simple reason, and that's that no matter how good this technology becomes and what the algorithms can do and what they can create, it's never gonna give you that same experience of going out into the real world with your camera. I really enjoyed creating the images that I showed you earlier, but it's just not the same as getting out really early in the morning and seeing the sunrise coming up over the hills and experiencing that there and then, getting the exercise, the fresh air. I don't think AI is ever gonna give you that. So I think we're all right for a little while yet. But how convincing is AI? I said earlier in the video that I recently did some image polls on my YouTube channel, asking you to spot the real image between two different images. And I've got the results of them for you now. Okay, so here are the first two images. As you can see, 61% of people went for option one as the real image, but actually that is the generated image. So it was actually option two, which was my image. And I know that these were quite small when they were displayed on YouTube. I'm not sure you can actually make them bigger. So it was tough to judge them at that size. But it is really interesting that most people went for the AI generated image as the real one. Okay, so here are the second two images. 74% of people chose option one, 26 people, option two is the real image. And you got this one right. So option one, that's my image, and option two was generated. I think the second option here, you can tell, it's just a little bit too oversaturated, the colors, and probably just looks a little bit too unrealistic because of that. So the final two images, we've got option one, 65% of people saying that that's the real one, and 35% of people saying that option two is the real one. So once again, I can tell you that you're wrong on this. <laughs> it's actually the second option, which is the real one. I took that down in Dorset a couple of summers ago, and the top image is completely AI generated. And you can see just how photorealistic that is. If you look in the water there, it's got so much clarity. And it, like I said, mid journey, that's much more impressionist. It looks more like a painting and you can really tell that they are not real. But in Dali too, it's very, very difficult to discern it from an actual photo. So all interesting stuff, really good fun. And thanks for everybody who voted on those images. So that's about it for this video. Thanks again for watching everyone. As I always say, I really do appreciate it. And I really mean that. It really does mean a lot to me that you tune in and watch these every week. But if you are new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can always click down there on the big red button. 
or over here on this picture of me. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll catch me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.